Hello, everyone. Welcome back to College Football Corner, powered by the New York Sports Machine. I am your host with the most Jersey Joe Archino, joined by the myth, the man, the legend, Mr. Armand Medeo. We are here to break down what is shaping up to be an incredible opening weekend for the college football season. Armand, I kind of want to start because you're very tuned in. I would even use the word insider with you with the Florida State Seminoles. Now, obviously, Ever Golson gets the starting nod. Now, we did see a little bit of a roller coaster ride with him. What do you think? Can he lead Florida State to an ACC title this year? You know what, Joe? I mean, Ever Golson has had a troubling past. I mean, going to the BCS Championship two, uh, a couple years ago, then being suspended, then coming back, having that 6 and 0 start, and then going on that landslide. Ever Golson, I mean, he's had good times and he's had a lot of bad times. He has. So, I mean, it's very similar to Jameis Winston in one aspect. I mean, Jameis Winston's had his on the field success and his off the field problems, just like Ever Golson. Um, but definitely, he's the more talented and suitable athletic player for this Florida State team, especially now that Florida State lost 11 players in the draft. And this is a young Florida State team. And it is. Honestly, they could drop out of the even the top 15. I know they're number 10 right now, but I could see them dropping into like their early 20s when it's all said and done. I don't think you lost way too many players on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, you lost P.J. Williams. You lost Darby. Um, I mean, you have a great prospect. You you picked up a, a freshman named uh, Darwin James, who has a lot of upside. This kid, they moved Jalen Ramsey, who's probably the number two best defensive back at, but, um, after the guy on Florida. What's the, Hever Greaves? Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. know how to say his name. He's the best corner in football. Yeah. And then you have Kendall Fuller on Virginia Tech. I mean, there's a lot of good. And Jalen Ramsey's is right there. I mean, he was a freshman last year. Uh, he's a great in coverage, great zone read option. I mean, he can do anything. I mean, it's going to be a hard transition going from safety to corner. But honestly, offensively, uh, losing Rashad, Rashad Green, they lost O'Leary, they lost Carlos Williams. It's going to be interesting to see, but he's definitely a better uh, – substitute over Sean McGuire. Yeah, it's true. I, mean, I think Sean McGuire is interesting because, you know, coming in the game the way that he did when Jameis had that suspension and stepping up and winning that them ba that big game, but we know Everett Goldson how dynamic of a playmaker he is in both departments. Moving off of that, we got a nice little <laughs> sizable uh, portion to get you already for Florida State season, but I think the first game to highlight which a lot of attention is being drawn to is Louisville and Auburn. Now, when I look at Auburn this year, I think it's all Jeremy Johnson. I think Jeremy Johnson, when you look at him, he's a guy who's big, strong, can get the ball down the field. It's something Gus Malzahn hasn't had to this point in his Auburn career is a reliable passing quarterback. When I look at Auburn, I think this is going to allow Gus to really be more creative, call different plays, make more formations. It's going to make his job much easier, and I think it's going to make them much more hard to prepare for because you don't just have that threat of the run, which mm. no one has really been able to stop under Gus Malzahn yet. You also have a very effective quarterback who can throw the football. I have Auburn in my college football playoff. Oh, what do you think about no, Joe, Absolutely. You're 100% correct. Um, I definitely think that... Uh, you know, Johnson's probably the closest thing that they've had to Cam Newton. I mean, Nick Marshall, yes. he wasn't the most talented player, but he had an incredible work ethic. Yes, he did. He put, very good athlete. Yes, very good athlete. That's what. That's why he was able to, you know, to take Gus Malzahn's uh, offense and you know keep it keep it steady moving. But I definitely think Auburn's going to be there when it's all said and done with TCU and Ohio State, and they're definitely going to be there, Joe. No, I agree. And obviously, one of the next ones is we go to Auburn's rival, Alabama, who's mm -hmm. taking on Wisconsin. If there's a chance of an upset this weekend, I think there's a couple games, I think that's got a potential to be an upset. I I'm not high on the Alabama ba bandwagon this year. I'm really not. I think when you look at them last year, Blake Sims, you take Amari Cooper away from that Alabama team, they might lose two of those other games in the SEC. They certainly lose the Arkansas game, maybe even the Tennessee game. But I think when you look at this year, there's a lot of uncertainty there. I mean, Jay Coker is supposed to win that job. It doesn't seem like he is. I mean, And you don't have the playmakers that you did last year to compensate for that. So there's just way too many questions for me for Alabama. For an SEC around them that's getting better collectively, I just think there's too many question marks there for me at quarterback. I do. I absolutely think that I, a team in the SEC I want to watch out for, too, in their, in their side of the SEC is Louisiana. I like uh, LSU. L yeah, LSU, Louisiana State University. My bad. Uh, what's the uh, Fortunat? Oh, you say Leonard, Leonard Leonard Fournette. Fournette is yeah. fantastic. He's a fantastic runner. I mean, he was a little bit uh, 
uh, his expectations. He kind of came out slow a little last year, but he finished great with those last two games over oh, 140 yeah. yards. But I think that Alabama, I mean, even throughout the past, the last year they were great offensively, but Alabama's been known for their d- defense. Yes. More. Well, I mean, even when you had McCarron there and mm-hmm. then you had McElroy, they, they weren't earth-shattering quarterbacks, yeah. but they had such good lines and mm-hmm. the, the defenses. They could rely on them. And they've lost a lot of defensive players. They I have. Mean, they lost Jamie Collins. They lost yep. a lot of good guys. Landon Collins is now gone. Yeah, I mean, Landon a Collins lot of those bad. guys are gone. Uh, but it's very interesting. I think it's it's really changing and all around the SEC. You're seeing it. I mean, Arkansas is getting better. Kentucky is getting better. LSU, I mean, conceivably, Anthony Jennings, I thought, who was their quarterback last year, might have been the worst quarterback <laughs> yeah, in the bad. SEC. He was awful, and I think that's part of the reason – uh, Leonard Fournette, I mean, he saw so many defenders in the box because you know Anthony Jennings can't throw the football. I, I mean, it, it's almost painful to watch because he was that bad. What do you think about Dak Prescott and uh, Mississippi State? I think Dak Prescott's a tight end playing quarterback, honestly. <laughs> I mean, he he had his moments last year, but then what did we see? When they played Alabama, when they played the big boys, what happened? Kind of fell yep. folded. Um, I like Dan Mullen. I think he's a fantastic coach. Just not a big Dak Prescott fan. Never am I. Never was. He's got great size. I mean, people like to compare him to Tim Tebow, which uh, I guess from an athletic standpoint, it's not a bad comparison. But Tebow could throw the football really well yeah. when he played in college. Dak Prescott's still not a, a great, consistent passer. Now, moving on, on to the other side of the SEC and the other side of the division, um, I think that this division— uh, with Tennessee and yes. Georgia, that's gonna be very interesting because there's a lot of dark horses in that that side Nick of the SEC. Nick Chubb for Georgia is a beast. I think he's I think he's the second best runner in all of college football. Who do you have number one on Pittsburgh? Hmm? Powell. Oh, okay. I really think that guy. I mean, he's got the big frame. I mean, he rushed for 1,700 yards last year. Yeah. I mean, he played in the ACC. Besides Florida State, there's not that many. Virginia Tech has a good defense, but other than that, yeah. It's not a very defensive sound. Division. I think I like I like Fournette, Royce Freeman, Powell, um, uh, Elliot. And, and Elliot. Oh my goodness! How could you forget about Ezekiel Elliott? Yeah, there's a lot. I would think. Say, I don't know what order, but I think those guys all there. You know, and what's interesting too about this, I, I'd say over the next couple of years, we we we're seeing more better running backs. We are. I think they're actually quarterbacks are diminishing in college football. Well, you know, it's it's funny because everyone's going to speed, spacing. Everybody wants to be that that cool gimmicky offense, like we saw what Baylor did. Baylor really transformed. Our brows really transformed them into kind of that that Midwest uh, Oregon, basically. I mean, people are trying that now, and it's it's interesting because when you talk to NFL people now, it, they're saying it's making defenders more bad yeah, defenders. All the read options yep. and everything, they're all coming out of the shotgun now, and you don't know if these court. Most of the quarterbacks are running backs. So basically, have two yeah. running backs on the field now. I mean, look at look at Nick Marshall. A guy like Nick Marshall is able to do what he does because of his his athleticism. I mean, his first the reason they lost to Florida State. I mean, I always say is, is Florida State had a quarterback who could get you down the field by throwing the football very quickly. Gus Malzahn's offense needed to work its time down the field, needed to run the ball, needed to set things up more. And that's the, that's the basically, at the end of the day, what separates teams like that. You either have a quarterback like Jameis who's got a big arm and can throw the ball, which I think Auburn has now, yeah. or you don't. Exactly. I think that's a really good uh, good point because Johnson has the ability to step up in the pocket. <laughs> I mean, he's he's an experienced, was he a senior? He's been around, Johnson. Jeremy, he he actually played because uh, Nick Marshall was suspended the first half yeah, of the first game the last year. So Jeremy Johnson played the first half against mm-hmm. Texas A&M last year, and he looked very good. He did. I mean, I mean, the guy is smooth. I mean, he could step up, make throws. He looks more poised in the pocket, which is definitely going to help spread the offense out. It does. Now, for the last minute of the show, obviously Ohio State, a lot of people have coined in to win it all again this year. I do, certainly. Mm-hmm. I just think they have way too much talent still on that roster. But the quarterbacks there, J.T. Barrett and Cardell Jones. Now, we still haven't received word who the starter will be. We think both will play in the opening game against Virginia Tech. But, Armand, to finish out the show, if you yeah. had to name the starter between Cardell and J.T. Barrett, which one are you going with? Joe, I hope you agree with me. I love J.T. Barrett. I think this me guy has the agree. ability to yes. win a Heisman. Oh, I, 
he led them to five straight games where he was responsible solely for 500 yards of total offense. He's the second best quarterback in the game. I, I, I don't after, disagree. Um, Boykin. He can do it. He, he's the total package. He can throw the ball. He's got great situational awareness. He really does. Now, I like Cardell, too. I think Cardell's a terrific oh, absolutely. quarterback. Absolutely. He can start anywhere. But JT is just, he brings you everything you could possibly want. I mean, when you watched him in that Michigan State game, it was as if you're watching a guy who's a fifth-year starter. I mean, he the way he picked apart that defense and just at will running the ball, making the right mm. plays on third down, setting up play action. It, it just he's a fantastic quarterback. I think that's what separates him from Cardell Jones. He has better situational awareness. At, and we did. What do we say? I mean, he, Cardell even in that short span, he's not afraid to throw the football. So he's mm-hmm. going to throw some some interceptions. interceptions. Yeah. I think JT Barrett, like you said, is the more aware in the pocket. I just, I'm telling you, this guy is going to take this team back to the championship. Well, you heard it from him. (laughs) Back to the championship. Back to the real world for us. We will be back next week with another recast, breaking down everything that we saw in week one. Maybe even throw in a couple other things. But we are signing off for now. Jersey Joe Archino here with our Mama Dea. We'll be back next week, folks. Have a good one, guys.